Did you know that you can turn any photo into a watercolor portrait using Midjourney? In this video, that's exactly what I'm going to show you. It's surprisingly easy. You can take any photo, whether it's yours or found elsewhere, and turn it into a beautiful watercolor painting using Midjourney AI in just seconds. The first thing you need to do is log into the Midjourney website. I'm using the website interface because it's much easier here. Then, go to the image icon at the very top and click on it. You can use any image in your library or you can upload a new one. Once the image is uploaded, you should click on it to add it to the prompt box. Then, look for the icons near the bottom of the image. Hover over them, change the icon to the one that looks like a profile icon, and that's it. Now it's time for the prompt. I'm going to write a very basic prompt, though it's a bit lengthy. After you finish writing your prompt, add this parameter dash dash CW50. This is for character reference, which helps control how much the generated image resembles the person in the photo. Go to your settings and make sure you're using Midjourney version 6 or higher, because this parameter won't work in older versions. Hit enter to generate the image. I'll just click on the brush icon to go to my library tab. Here, you'll see all the images you've created recently. These results are beautiful portraits and they look pretty realistic. You can see the watercolor strokes coming through, especially in this one. I actually like the way this one turned out. It has a nice blue haint in the background and it looks really good. But if you think this is too simple and you prefer something more creative with details, I'll show you a simple trick. You can click on the image so that it reappears in the box. Now, I'm going to do something unique I'll open a PDF file that has watercolor SREF codes. You can get this via the link in the description below. This PDF has more than 60 style reference codes you can add to your generations to create unique watercolor art styles. So, I'm just gonna copy the entire prompt from the PDF. After pasting the prompt here, I'm adding dash dash CW50 so the style comes through. I'll then regenerate. And there we have it. These results all look good. The character resemblance is good and the style is also coming through. Look at the flowers in the background. They have the pastel vibe and look like an actual watercolor portrait. I love the hair here. It looks amazing. Just so you know, because we used a portrait of a real person, the style of the photo influences the final output. Still, all the images look good though. Now let me show you another example. I'm going to delete the previous code and replace it with something else from the PDF. See what happens? This particular SREF code features sideways portrait. So even though the original image was facing forward, it's now sideways because of the code's influence. This shows that depending on the SREF code you use, the output style will differ. You can still see the watercolor portrait style. Even though it's realistic, you can see the watercolor effect in the hair and background. It's really nice. Now let me show you another technique. This time, I won't include the character reference parameter. We're only going to use the SREF code. I'll just go back to the PDF. I'll look for another watercolor S code that I like. I'll copy it, paste it into the prompt, and generate. As you can see, when you generate images without character reference parameter, the prompt has less weight than the original image reference, so the result might look more realistic and less like a stylized watercolor painting. This means that you'll see more realism in the portrait and not as much of that watercolor flair. Let's go back and add the CW parameter to the prompt. I'll also change the background color to something else. I absolutely love how it looks like a real artistic watercolor sketch. It's still a bit realistic, but it blends perfectly because of how we combine the CW parameter and the S ref code. You can always play with these parameters to get something unique. One of the variations here is absolutely amazing. Someone would be happy to print and frame it in their home. Let me show you one last S ref code that works nicely. Going back to the PDF, I'll choose a different watercolor cell code.
I'll paste it into the same prompt and change the background back to white. This result is beautiful. It's very natural and detailed. Like a genuine watercolor painting, people might not even realize it's AI generated. One thing to keep in mind though is that by using the character reference parameter, you may reduce the exact facial resemblance to the original photo. If you want a result that only loosely resembles the source image, this is the method to use. I've created an entire list of these watercolor S ref codes, and if you want to see the video, I'll leave the link in the description below. You can also download the PDF I mentioned through the link there as well. So that's how you can turn any image into a watercolor portrait using Midjourney AI. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. Ask any questions you have in the comments, and I'll definitely respond. If you know anyone who might be interested in this, please share the video. It really helps my channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.